Yo, what's up, everyone? What's going on? Welcome to another episode of Let's Be Real. I am your host, Joe Mambu. Boy, Big Sure, I'm here for you, people. Be here for you. Yes, yes. Another uh, episode. Uh, this is episode 103, and this is called What is Vince's Legacy? All right. You don't know. Vince Carter has retired from the NBA, a 22-year uh, career. Stellar career, some would say not, but the question is, not so much if he's a Hall of Famer, right? But was did he underachieve in his career? I know for the most goal, play, for most players, the goal is to win an NBA championship. Vince Carter never sniffed it, never came close, but he had a really good career, a long career. And 22 years is not something to be laughed at. But Big Sherm, what do you uh, want to say on it? What do you think? Vince Carter is a national treasure. Oh, national the, treasure. He's a national treasure. He might not have, well, like you said, the goal for every NBA player is to win an NBA championship. Yes, sir. But he didn't get a chance to do that. But he had moments. Like, mm-hmm. for instance, I think it was 2001. Mm-hmm. Game seven. Eastern Conference semifinals versus... The Sixers. The Sixers. Yeah. He, they were, all the big news was, oh, he's going to go to his graduation in I Chapel Hill. I remember that, yep. And everyone, some people were giving him flack. Even some newscasters was giving him flack for it, like, oh, he should be concentrating on the game. But I said to myself, even back then, when I was back there, I was like, you know, this is a big moment. This is college. You don't get another chance at college to graduate from college. Like, you put in your hard work, your blood, sweat, and tears to Go to college to make something of himself. And he promised his mom he would graduate. Yes, and that's the one thing I, I love the best. He promised his mom he would graduate. And he did it. And he went to the graduation. And then he got on a plane and went up the coast to Philadelphia, played game seven, and played in one of the probably one of the better games I've seen him play. He did. He did. I think he had 38. Uh, I'm not too sure, actually. That was years I think ago. He, he, uh, by the 2000, that's 2001, bro. Okay, Game 7, Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, put uh, that to work. Put that computer to work. Put that laptop to work, brother. Yeah, well, see, you see. know. But, um, yeah, I mean, listen. That was, uh, listen, Vince Carter had a great seven years in Toronto, right? But, had, but, but, but. Yeah, go ahead. But, but with that, they feel like he portrayed Toronto in a way when he left. He got traded. I mean, he got traded, but they feel they still, they still feel like they really felt betrayed. Like, like, oh, how are you trading the best player, best player on our team? Like, that was their guy yeah. for for those seven years. Like, the first dunk, like he blew up literally with that first dunk at, at Air Canada. I think it was Air Canada Center. He, it was his first NBA dunk. Like, he dunked on somebody. Yeah, you feel me? Like, if he felt that it was one of their own, and he it, like the the the, the organization just traded him away, and it's like it felt like so demoralizing in a sense. It was yeah, demoralizing no. to them. I mean, it definitely was. I mean, you look at it, it was basically them having to rebuild, right? Because they shipped out McGrady. A few he went years, to Orlando. Went to Orlando. And then I always think about how that to, like, especially in today's NBA, because if you look at a similar situation, uh, in today's current NBA, it's like Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Not saying those two players are any any of the caliber of player that Kawhi is. Uh, I'd say I would say offensively, McGrady's obviously better than. Well, he's better than both of them. I think he's better than George, and he's better yeah, than he is. Kawhi he is. Leonard. Uh, he is. Defensively, he is. we know McGrady was kind of the equivalent. Uh, Yo, don't, do that, <laughs> don't, don't, <come> on. <laughs> don't do that degree, man. to a certain degree as uh, today's NBA defenders, right? You you thought I had somebody in, in mind? Who do you think? Yeah, I'm thinking I, about? I, you know who I was thinking about too. I'm not, and I'm, I was not uh, Vince Carter. I mean, not Vince Carter, uh, James Harden. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I will, I will not do that to, to T Mac. I was. I, I, I hope. I hope he wasn't gonna do that to T Mac. No, don't no, disrespect no. that man like that, yo. No, 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 no. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, you look at if those two guys would have stayed together. I'm oh my sure, god! Yeah, I'm pretty sure they would. McGrady would have never got injured. No, well, don't say that. Don't say that. Well, no, I'm just saying because it's it never really worked out in Orlando, right? Right, and then it was, it was supposed to be the big, big three with him, Duncan, and Grant Hill, and it never materialized. That was the rumor out yeah. there. Yeah. But uh, man, I look at I look at Vince Carter's career now. It, the The problem with him playing so long is that he, you know, the longer you play, the more you're on the decline, right? So he played 22 years, and his numbers weren't that great. Uh, his overall numbers is 16.7, 4.3, and 3.1. So that's uh, rebounds and assists. Four point four point. Uh, let me just make sure real quick. But he he averaged sixteen point seven. And obviously, we know Vince Carter. He was drafted. Wait, number that's five. his career average. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, um, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll let you know right now. I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give it to you. But um, yeah, I mean, the long that that was the problem. He played so long that you know he wasn't really used as much. Fun to watch, man. He was fun to watch in New Jersey. And listen, like I said, his best dunk is in a Nets jersey. And his, qu- his second best dunk is probably in the Team USA jersey. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. Frederick Weiss. Yeah. Like, I'm when you not a, be, yeah, go ahead. My bad. Well, you could well, you can jump over a 7'2", dude. Like, yeah. yeah. That's that's crazy, bro. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's just crazy, son. And that's when Vince had, had – when he was growing his hair out. You feel yeah, me? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Everyone was like, yo, why is he growing his hair out? But yo, when he dunked, he's like, oh, forget it. Forget all that. Yo, he just destroyed Frederick Weiss. And now, of course, he was the Knicks player at that time. So then they said, oh, we're yeah. done with this dude. Yeah. We're done with Frederick. He, if he can't, I mean, no one can really block Vince anyway. Yeah, but that, yeah you can. You can. You can't block Vince. But once, once, and once they said, oh, the Knicks, Frederick Weiss, it was like, that's it. The Knicks are done. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Their next Patrick Ewan type of center is done with. That prospect is over with. Done. Yeah. Finito. <laughs> so, so my thing is, you look at all, because like I said, he played 22 years, but you look at all the stuff. What's like the one defining moment for you in his career? Like the one thing you look at and you be like, yo, this is this is the best thing. No, for me, it, it was him playing, getting on a plane, after graduation, doing something that he he, t- he promised his mom he would do, yeah. complete his degree, got on a plane, played game seven, and proved everybody wrong because he didn't cost them the game. He had a yeah. chance to win the game, as a matter yeah. of fact. Yeah. yeah. And it just rimmed out. That's my defining thing. Against all odds, he went out there and said, F it, I'm going to go do what I want to do. And, and, and it, all, it, it nearly got him to the dance. It yeah. nearly got him to the dance. That's my last. Yeah. I mean, the Ducks itself are, are always going to be there, but yeah. for me, playing wise on the court itself, like besides the dunk, like on the court, court, yeah, in a high level situation, he was yeah. there. He just couldn't get it over the hump. But he, it was impressive what he was doing to me at that point in time. Yeah, I, I think so. For me, though, I'm gonna tell you, it's it's. It's the dunk on Alonzo Mourning. The morning, I, I know. Yeah, you know I'm saying oh, like no, it, just, I mean, it, it was way <laughs> too good. Like I loved it. I enjoyed it. I, I still today. I still watch that dunk, man. And um, for me, it was that. You know, what I mean, for me, it was that after that. But um, I mean, how do you feel? He 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 put in a trade request, right? Mm. So listen, he kind of know the that the writing is on the wall. Uh, how do you feel about it? Let me tell you something. When someone comes out in the draft and says they want to play for the New York Jets and really mean it, you have to do everything in your power to keep this man happy. Yeah. The minute you brought Adam Gase in there, I said, yo, this this guy is going to rip this thing apart. They're not going to do anything, and they're going to end up losing Jamal Adams. And so yeah. said, so done. They're on the verge of losing Jamal Adams now. They are. Like, I mean, technically not. Because they have him for two years, but he could yeah, be disengaged can, and not be as productive. As right, he he could pull years. he could pull a Jalen Ramsey because yeah. he's the best player on their team on, yeah. on on their team. Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It was with Mono with the Mono with with, with Sam Sam Donald. Sam, Sam Donald, yeah. 
with the mono. Got, yeah. Well, thank God he got came back from the mono, you know. Yep. But Jamal Adams, to me, he is one of the top safeties in the league. Yeah. He, he, you are going to sit there, and you're not going to sit there and let him just fester on there because the fans are not going to accept that at all. Yeah. No. Yeah. At all. So hey, let him get let him get let, get get him traded. He don't want to be there. I don't blame him for not wanting to be there. To tell you the truth. Yeah. So yeah, this yeah. is. What, because, yeah, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Because go they don't know what they're doing in New York. They never. When Brady was, when Tom Brady was there, I always said, "Listen, Bill Belichick took advantage of, of the NFC, AFC East, because none oh, of these yeah. teams, and none of these teams knew what the hell they were doing in the first place." Yeah. Now Brady is gone. Now Brady is gone, and that it seems like the Buffalo Bills now are are the lead dog, at least on paper right now. But with, with them adding to, to Stephon Diggs, and yeah. their defense is just murderer's row. Yeah. The Jets still continue to make bullshit moves and bullshit decisions. Bullshit. Sounds and like Jam- a New York organization to me. Yeah, pretty much. At least they're not the Knicks, you know. Yeah. But like Jamal Adams, to me, I the most mm-hmm. part, you're just gonna draft some young kid out of a big program, and he's gonna take over. Uh, I think Jamal Adams is fair in that because his dad went. His he saw his dad go through it, right? Mm-hmm. And Jamal Adams doesn't want to go through that. Because uh, to me, when I read the that he uh, that he wanted his money, now I was like, yo, you still got two years left. So, but, like, what what's the rush? But when I read the story about his father, I was like, oh, okay, I get it. Because it's like you're – it feels like you're just um, – you're doubting your abilities to stay healthy. But I get it. It's in the back of his mind because he's seen his dad go through it. So I totally understand why you would want that money now or play for a playoff uh, championship contending team and make some noise and get your money after that, you know? Let me tell you something. That's part of that, that that's part of the equation with his mm-hmm. pops and the injury and everything. But I'm yeah. telling you, he does not like Norman Bates. Period. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He does not like Norman Bates. And let me tell you something. If he goes to if if he gets traded to Baltimore or Kansas City, they're going to win the championship. Yeah, yeah, they definitely because will. he's a game changing safety. Period. He he's going to get his money regarded because he, he is a top five safety in the league right now. Yeah. Period. Yeah. All if right. he goes, if he goes to Seattle, hey, it could be. But he, if he goes to Baltimore and he makes up with that defense. With yeah. Marcus Peters and Humphrey, are you fucking kidding me? That's a good. that's a wrap. That's the championship wrap. If he goes to Kansas City and match up with Matthew on the other side, the other safety, oh yeah, it's yeah. a wrap. Yeah, with Mahomes, it's a wrap. It's over, man. If he goes to San Francisco, the NFC is done with. Yeah, they will run the NFC. I don't care if if that fake gold is there in um Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, yeah. I don't care what goat you got. You ain't stopping all that fire, defensive firepower with Bosa and Fred Warner and them and them guys. Over.